Seed Studio, you can find information about the DSO Quad. As you can see, they're having a contest for packaging design, so you may want to join in that. January 31st has come and gone, so I don't know if you're too late or not. Here are some product specifications for those interested. You can pause the video and read this if you feel like it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to include the rest of it. So that tells you pretty much the features. Just for continuity, this is my latest post located up here at this location. And it was done on this date. So you go to that topic, scroll down to get to this date. And you'll find my name, YGRA. Uh, discusses here which operating systems I was using, which firmware I was using. This paragraph talks about whether or not the 36 mega samples per second is shared between the channels. This paragraph here is all speculative. We're speculating how the front end might be built in the absence of a schematic. Hopefully the schematic shows up pretty soon. This section talks about signal generator capabilities. Many people have asked about that. This section talks about the math capabilities. And this paragraph points out that there seems to be a measurement issue with the time cursors. And last but not least, uh, we can't measure the frequency yet. That hasn't been added. It's listed, but it's not there yet. So you can look that over if you want to clarify any issues you might have. Okay, across the top you see that there's four buttons. Run start button, the step to options button, M button means save to memory your configurations, your screen setup configurations, and F for file save, save files. Over here we have a plus or minus jog switch, and over here we have a left and right arrow jog switch. So let's take a look at those. If I move the left or right arrow jog switch notice right now my cursor is blinking right up here. If I move it to the left it goes to the next position. But notice it went down. That's because it remembers where you were. When you use the S switch you can step through the various positions and wherever you leave it when you jog left or right then it stays in that position. Notice right now there's nothing flashing here. I just went left one position. That's because it's way down here in the bottom right hand corner. It's the X position which is your trigger position. So once again I press the S key it will step back up to the top one, step down to the next one, set the time base, and step back down to exposition. So this is true on all these menu items. So put it back up to the top. We slide over here. We have uh, channel four, channels three, and channel C and D are TTL logic channels. And if we use the plus or minus toggle, you see that we can select file four, three, two, one. We have channels C and D. I think that's an OR, it's C or D, and then C and D logic comparisons. Then we have channels A and B, mathematical subtract, shown down here on this green channel, or mathematical A plus B of the two analog channels shown down on the green channel, or just the green channel itself if you're looking at TTL. I'm going to go ahead and hide it. So it goes jog over here to the left. Notice here on channel B, which is the yellow lines. One thing that might be confusing is if you go back over here to the trigger channel, the trigger menu item, notice it's light blue right now. If I use the plus or minus jog tool, I can switch to the channel I want to have the trigger's effect. So right now it's affecting the B channel because it's yellow. <clears throat> right now it's affecting the A channel because it's blue. So if you're over here doing things on the 
A or B channel, make sure you have the associated trigger cover that matches the channel, otherwise your triggers won't affect that channel. In each of the top menu channels, there's three choices. Well, not each one. This one has three choices. Triggers, and you use your plus minus jog tool. We already said to change which channel you want the triggers to affect. Then use the S button over here to select. Now it's on the positive transition trigger. We now use the plus or minus jog to change it to other things. Negative transition. I won't go into all of them right now. Now we can step down to the next channel, which is the threshold level. And now the plus or minus jog will set there, and you can see the, the trigger level line right here is moving with the plus or minus jog key. Same holds true for any of these other menu items. Let's go back and look at channel A for a second. Notice channel A right now I'm selected on volts per division. If I use the plus or minus jog key I can step through the various scales, volts per division. If I hit the S key it'll step down here, way down at the bottom, the vertical position, and now I can move the plus or minus jog key can move the waveform up or down. If I step again that brings us back up to A, and here I can, with the plus or minus, I can hide it or enable it. There's only two choices. If I step again, we're down here on the input coupling right now. It's AC. The plus or minus jog, I can make it DC or AC. So that's how you operate these functions on the channels A and B. Because I updated the software to version date uh, January 18th, 2011. With that update, it still says the same software version number, which is a little confusing. Should have had a .0x change, but they don't. So with this software version, there's also a 0115 version. Notice we now have a backlight capability. We can set the backlight intensity, and we have a volume adjustment, just the volume. And one thing that I see missing right now is the grid adjustment, so maybe they'll add that in the future. We come down the page here, scroll down. The scroll bar is a little bit unusual. It's kind of keep track, hard to keep track of where it went. Notice here it jumped to delta voltage. Now it's down here at save file. So we can save files if you go through the proper procedure formatting the internal USB drive. Once again, you step through here at the S key to select the file number and file data type. And then you can use the plus minus jog key to change. There's three choices, BMP, DAT, and CVS. Oh, I see. They got rid of the CVS on version 118. So you step back, and then you, when you're ready to save the file, you just actually hold the F key, and it will save the file, and it'll say it's okay. It saved it. Notice it did not update the file sequence number. You have to go over there if you want to do another save. You're going to have to come up here and step over to the next position. Use the plus or minus jog key to jog it up one position. I don't know if the F will work right now or not. Yeah, the F works no matter which one of these sub menus you have selected. So that pretty much concludes uh, a quick view of how to use the keys on this unit. It appears that the Quad Nano was designed so that you could have three additional applications installed simultaneously. When you turn it on, you hold the S key, and that installs the secondary application number one, M key installs the secondary application two, and F key installs the secondary application number three. If you don't hold any keys turn it on, it goes to the default application, which we're looking at right now. If you want to update your firmware, you simply turn it off while it's off. You hold the stop run key, turn it on, and it goes out and looks on its own internal flight hard drive. And it looks for a file to see if it has an update. So if it has a file that matches the format it's looking for, it will update the thing automatically. So all I do now is turn it off, turn it back on. 
now it's been updated. So we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. We'll look at it in a few minutes on the computer. Okay, here we are looking at the 2 megabyte USB drive built inside the Quad Nano. It has a volume name of DSO Quad, and then the drive loader just happens to be I on my computer. And the contents, when it came from the factory, it had 0 through 9 BMP. It also had this 1229sys.hex. I renamed it. I reversed the three letters of the extension to XEH so it doesn't recognize it now. I won't try to load it. And the last thing I loaded was 0118 application.hex. There's also a 115 application. I reversed it. Extend again so it doesn't recognize it. Won't try to load it. So instead of deleting the old files, just change the extent. That way you can always come back to it later if you desire to. I created a dummy DAT file and I did save DAT file. That seemed to work. I created a dummy that came with dummy BMPs and I saved file 0, file 1. And that worked fine. Up here is the 118 firmware folder. Uh, when you unzip this file right here you get these three files. I'm confused why that says that. What's going on there? As it turns out my uh, unzipping program thought that was an ISO because it's a binary file but it's just a bin file so that's why it's got that symbol. So when you unzip this 0118 firmware you end up with App hex, sys hex, and FPAG, FPGA bin. I have not installed the bin nor the sys hex. And I'm waiting to see how that all goes before I do that. I have installed 118 app and it seems to run just fine. So we're back at this view again. So that concludes the uh, internal USB drive. You plug in a USB cable and it becomes another drive just like any other drive on your computer. What I have noticed is that if the USB cable is plugged into the Quad Nano, when you turn on the Quad Nano, it will not register. It will not become a drive on your computer. You have to unplug the cable and then plug the USB cable back in after the Nano is powered up before your PC will find it as a physical drive named DSO Quad. Although my Chinese is non-existent, I managed to find this location right here, which seems to have the most current file downloads for the Quad Nano. Right here we have this file, it's a RAR, this file, and this file. These three, I believe, are the most current. And then these people further down are talking about the results of loading those files. So you're on your own with this site, but that's I think that is where you find the uh, current software, the latest updates. On this page right here, I found some good pictures of the Nano. Here we have an exploded view of all the various components. Here we have the front view and the rear view of the main circuit board. And we got exploded views of these cases, case assembly items, and the four screws. I don't know what those are for. Maybe somebody else can figure this out. Okay, here's some more uh, Chinese form information. I'll pause so you can stop and pause if you want to read it. There's a few things I find interesting further down the page here. Well, first of all, it looks up with ADCs. They got a 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz, and 100 megahertz. It looks like. So I don't know if that's for different functions within the same scope or that's just improvements. I just don't know. Down here, you notice that they talk about 30 samples per second to 72 million samples per second, and maybe that's the analog. I'm not sure. Here's 30 samples per second, 144 mega samples per second. This is probably the uh, circuit board dimensions, the weight of the circuit board. 
So these in items right here interest me. I'd like to find out more about them. Here we also have a uh, good picture of the component side of the 203 quad nano. And you can look at this and maybe somebody can trace this out to find out the front end circuits. Okay, here we have a picture of the uh, DS203, which is the quad nano, the circuit board, with the screen side of it showing. In closing, I just want to point out that what we've been looking here is, is an engineering sample of the product. It's not a finished product. It's to be out pretty soon. Obviously, there's lots of little changes to be done. One thing I haven't talked about is that the silk screen on the left-hand side of the quad nano has the output signal generator and a channel Ajax mislabeled. So you have to plug your probe into what's called the signal out. And the signal out comes out of the channel Ajax. So little things like that are being corrected at this time. 